you remember the good old days when you were duplicating and cloning hard drives? Just how chuffing easy it was. SATA was everywhere and SATA docking stations, JBOD boxes, the works was everywhere. Now, in an era of M.2 NVMEs, things aren't quite so simple. And now when we've passed the event horizon with a majority of our devices, from our client devices for Windows and Mac, all the way through to network attached storage systems, now prioritizing M.2 storage have arrived, cloning M.2 is actually a little bit more finickety. And that's what today's video is about. This is an M.2 NVMe offline duplication box. It also runs on USB 4 connectivity, allowing you a potential 40 gigabits per second transmission for the storage on these drives. And looking around at about 77 nicker and a 10 gig USB version at about 50 nicker, there's a lot to like here. And in today's video, we're actually gonna see if this budget AliExpress duplicator is worth your time, your money, and your data. But before we go any further, we should talk about the sponsor of today's video, AliExpress. Solutions like today's duplicator are available at a fraction of the price of named brand alternatives, and often they're produced in the same factory or production facility, and you can pick these up often at a huge discount on AliExpress. Alongside this, AliExpress has just kicked off its back-to-school blowout with up to 80% off thousands of products. Off-season clearance starting on products as low as £1 in price and millions of promo co coupons to use as well. Plus, if that's not enough, you can use the discount codes on screen right now to allow even further savings on your AliExpress product today. Finally, there is still the AliExpress cashback program in operation, where you can join my team via the 3D barcode on screen or searching for the word NAS on the AliExpress mobile app to potentially recoup hundreds of pounds back on your order. Thanks again to AliExpress for sponsoring today's video, and let's crack back on with the review. Now, I use a lot of M.2s here on the channel. Whether it is I'm installing a brand new NAS operating system to bench test a new system, or that I'm using multiple M.2 NVMEs for caching or performance testing, this is the fraction of the M.2s I use on the channel. Nevertheless, I still get through quite a lot of them, and reuse is a thing, and time and efficiency, my time is valuable. So for that, something like this is going to be hugely beneficial. Being completely offline means that I don't need to connect it to a client system, and we will get to that connection later on. This allows me to grab my M.2 source disk that may have perhaps a Zimmer OS installed from a previous video, pop it inside bay one, and then from there choose, if I've got multiple devices being reviewed, to stick multiple M.2s inside the available port, inside the available slot, and then from there I can go ahead and start duplicating. Now in my testing of this device, I was able to quickly, within 16 minutes, duplicate a 500 gig SSD that had an operating system on it onto three more M.2s, again, within 16 minutes. And hopefully, as you can see on screen, we're able to double check that it was all carried over. Now, that is pretty impressive for that price tag. And again, remember, I only connected the PC to show what was on the disks. Ultimately, the entire operation was conducted offline and with the buttons and the LEDs there on the front. Now that did, of course, arrive with shortfalls. So for example, I was unable to run this off of just USB power. Whether I was accessing this on the Windows machine that I was using on just one disk, or running the whole operation for offline, uh, an offline docking station and cloning, I was unable to do so just off of USB power. It always needed mains power. It arrives with a mains PSU, which goes into a standard barrel connector, and the system arrives with a USB Type-C cable. In fact, one of the things I found kind of odd is this is rated at 240 watts. This is a very decent little USB cable it's been included with, and that should have been enough from my Thunderbolt 4 system and USB 4 system to power this device. So again, it's not without limitations. Likewise, the LED system there on the front, as I'm sure you saw during the testing, could be a little clearer. We've got the copy button there, and to run the operation, I had to hold the button for three seconds until the light started flashing, and then after that, I go ahead and press it one more time to confirm, but with no LED beeps, no further indication there, maybe a stop start or are you ready, 
this does add an element of confusion to the setup. The manual does go into quite a lot of detail about how to do the operation, so fair play for them for including it. But just keep in mind, this completely headless offline docking station, if you want to use it that way, isn't going to be the clearest. There's a reason something like this is 77 pounds. Now I've been using this in the studio now for the better part of a week. I've run it to duplicate different disks and I will say that in terms of operation, it still hasn't let me down yet. In fact, I duplicated the same operating system on one disk into three and that was the one that was being used in several of the DIY uh, NAS videos that you have seen here on the channel in the second two weeks of July. The uh, CWWK board, the tiny little N150 uh, GMK tech box upgrade, all of them were used using a disc that I duplicated from this and it did a very good job there. But once again, this is affordable for a reason. This is not to be confused with a forensic level duplicator. So things like secure erase wipe, you know, uh, right blocking, where you want to make sure that the original source disc is 100% confirmed to never be touchable. Uh, on top of that, there's a reason it could duplicate in 16 minutes. There's no option to run a forensic level scan, uh, forensic level dupe. There is just the simple, which means something like this for forensic level evidence and cyber security, you know, cyber crimes is going to get laughed out of the house. On the other hand, those kind of duplicators, you are looking at you know, 500 to a thousand dollars for M.2 NVMe level duplication just to enter. Also, I think a lot of users that use a duplicator like this may be wondering about duplicating their OS drive onto a larger M.2. Now that is 100% supported as you saw from the test at the beginning. I was perfectly able to dupe that 500 gig drive onto three 1TB drives very, very conveniently. But do keep in mind, this does not allow you to extend partitions or delete partitions. You're still going to need to connect it to a client system in order to expand the existing volumes that you've copied over from the source onto the targets, which then kind of slightly reduces the whole offline nature of this for those of you looking to expand onto larger drives. But I will say, in terms of impact, this thing was borderline non-existent. It's completely fanless, it utilizes completely external aluminium heat sinks to dissipate heat from the top and even inside over the main chips operation there is a huge heat sink dissipating heat off the main controller that ASM 2464 uh, controller inside which is the gen 4 controller by the way and this runs at gen 4 speed now about that USB 4 connection there something we do need to discuss although all four discs were visible within my windows environment and I could transfer data between them the only performance numbers I could ever achieve was a read performance of around 2,300 megabytes to maybe a peak of 2,600 megabytes. And that was AJA, that was utilizing Crystal Disk. But the write performance never left around five to 600 megabytes per second there. Now, even when you dig into that um, Gen 4 controller there, there is adjustments to be made between uh, uh, Gen 4 times one, four times two, and there will scale up and scale down for the lanes but even when you go into the instructions on uh, the included manual, it does detail that in order to achieve anything even close to the uh, USB 4 speeds, it has to be a Gen 4 SSD inside there, which makes me think that the uh, lane speed there is going to be dropped, dropped it down to times one or maybe times two speed there in order to get anywhere near those performance. But right performance on here was very poor. So... If you are thinking of utilizing this for OS duplication, so in other words, get this connected to your Windows machine, stick in all the drives, and then dupe your OS drive from your Windows or Mac system that's running onto this, something I wouldn't really advise anyway, then you are going to be locked in at 500 megs for the write. But if you are duplicating inside it, it did a much better job. Now, this could be somewhat mitigated. I got it over a gigabyte per second when I enabled write caching, uh, but I will say, if you are thinking about duplicating an OS drive, you know, duplicating an encrypted drive in some way, I wouldn't really enable that kind of write caching because, you know, every bit counts when it comes to encryption. Overall, for $77, this does what it says on the tin. It allowed me to duplicate drives, it allowed me to mount multiple drives, and it delivered on that USB 4 connection. And although I didn't get to test the 10 gig version, again, look out for the model ID, I'm sure the 10 gig version would deliver at its $50 price tag as well. The kit 
gives you everything you're going to need. It arrives even with a USB-C to USB-A 10 gig USB adapter. Hell, when we had the system in operation, although it had no active fan, as you can see from the temperatures on screen, it was still able to deliver a pretty good reasonable working temperature, although obviously disc one was taking the brunt of a lot of the operation. And although there is still ventilation on it all the sides, you're still reliant on passive rather than an active ventilation system. Bottom line, this does what it says, and if you're looking for a cheap M.2 uh, SSD duplicator, I'd recommend this, but not for mission critical, not for any kind of business enterprise use. This, as a creator and creating videos here for YouTube, is fantastic. And for those of you that just want to take advantage of headless cloning, this is going to be good for you. At 77, it's hard to you know find fault, but it is still a product that is built around that price tag. So know what you're paying for and what you're getting for your money. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this or found it useful, please use not only the links in the description to the stores that we've linked towards, but also take advantage of the discount codes below to get even more money off this device at checkout over on AliExpress. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks to AliExpress for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you next time.